for today's uh show yes today we are doing here in the kitchen i've been complaining that she call uh you you've been sitting down sitting down why can't you do something different so let's do this today yes let's cook <laughs> not cook uh per se but let's prepare some food in the kitchen this is the day that we normally do a lot of food you guys i told you uh how we normally do things here so before we go right into the video welcome to today's show my name is shiko hope and this is shiko hope tv usa your home of hope here we stay in our Zekana. it is possible so this is my kitchen guys don't judge my kitchen <laughs> it is not that clean i have not done the general cleaning in my kitchen i will do after i'm done with preparation and today this is what we are doing so these are the corals or kales sukuma wiki that's what we call them home so i have already sorted them they are good what i will do here is just clean them and cut them here after that i will now prepare cabbage yes and grate some carrots uh we normally make a lot of food when we are free and so that we, do, we don't cook every day you guys you normally know you already know i work nights so i can't go to work at night then i come in the morning i start preparing food and then i go to work again that's a lot of work and i am in school i have to go to class each and every day for four hours and you guys you're waiting for a video every day it's too much i am a mom of many kids i'm a wife i'm a daughter i'm a sister too much i'm afraid of many so this is how I plan myself. I prepare this kind of stew and I keep in fridge. So each and every day, maybe we, we make just one course meal or maybe we don't make anything because fridge is full. Uh, if I can open my fridge right now, you guys, you can see there is a lot of ready food. But this is when we are eating ugali or cornmeal, that is. Cornmeal you can't make and keep in fridge. So we make cornmeal fresh, but these ones we put in fridge and we we do what? We set, we put in, in small uh, bowls per serving, that is. So that's how I plan myself. I don't cook every day, but today I will cook like three meals. So far, you can see even my apron is not that clean because I have been cooking today. And then... In the morning part, I was cooking some mandazis and some ganos. They are there cooling. And now, let me put, prepare this together. So, guys, let's do this together. Uh, all right. Now, I know you guys are wondering, Shiko, what are we discussing today? Or what is the title of the video today? So, today, uh, let's look at how to raise money for your green card processing maybe you have been applying for green card and then you have that inner thing that keep keep on telling you i don't know why i will get money to process this thing if ever i become selected so let's talk about that now as we prepare so my currants are there i just clean them and then i cut them so i have my bowl here with me so i will clean i will clean my currants there and I put them here and then I cut them here, you guys. Let's do this together. All right, so I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? <laughs> I know you can see me. I don't know if my water will make noise. I don't know if my water will make noise. So let's look at the funding for green card process, okay? And this is if you have been selected for diversity visa, aka green card. We normally call it green card, but green card are so many types of green cards, DV being one of them. So, because we are dumbed here on Shikop TV, we are dumbed, we are learned, uh, let's call it DV so that you guys you can understand. And anybody who is new here, welcome. Here we are so learned. We, we learned so many terms used uh, for green card. And today, let's look at how to raise money for green card processes. Processing, that is, 
um, what can I say? After the last, after this year's uh, results, now the 2023 results, which were re released some days ago, yes, it's just like two weeks ago, uh, so many people have been coming to me asking me uh, about, guys, you already know about FINS immigration services. I don't want to dwell so much on that because you already know so many videos I have done uh, about food migration services. This is where we assist you achieve your dream abroad. And so far we, have, we are still, uh, we are also offering hosting services. If you don't have a host if, or if you don't know anybody in America, we are hosting you at FINS. So after that, after learning about FINS, uh, the DV selectees or winners, they have been coming to me and asking, Shiko, do you fund, do things fund uh, if you don't have money so that when we come there or when I come there, I will pay, I will pay uh, back, I will pay back once I start working. And I'm like, oh, for now, things is not funding, at things we are not funding. Because you know, funding needs a lot of money, and since we are not prepared for that as far now, uh, but it has become uh, it has become uh, an issue to many selectees that is, and more so, most of the people who have been coming for for funding at things, they are singles, they are single people, very young, and. They don't have enough money to process because you guys know uh, green card is green card is free application is free but once you get selected it is no longer free you guys you already know that it is a lot of money needed and if you don't have that money it can be stressing that one we understand that one we understand so if you are there and you are selected and you don't know where to go or where to start and you have been in class, she hopes TV USA class, you know you need a, a lot of money. Now you become um, you become worried and you, are, you don't know where to go or where to start or where to start. But there is always an option. There is always a way out because the Lord God who made you apply for the diversity visa? Who also made you become selected, or who will make you become selected in the future, 2024, 2025, or even 2030? He will provide. He will provide. You know, there are some things. There are some things that we. And there are some things that we. We confess with our tongues and it uh, acts like you have tied yourself in such a in such a situation because you confessed with your tongue or with your mouth that I don't think I will make it or I don't think I will raise these funds to process the visas. So I just told you 80% of these people who have been coming to things asking for funding, they are single people. And also and also leave alone dv leave alone dv also student visas you know student visas you need bank statements and this bank statement you are required a lot of money so they have been coming asking me she call at fins do you provide or do you find or do you provide bank statement for student visas even the students who are the clients who want to apply for student visa with fins they are asking about bank statement if things provide, which we do not provide as far now, maybe later, or maybe in some time to come. Uh, but what, let's now come back now to, to the ground, things on the ground. How are things on the ground, okay? So, uh, let's assume, let's take a, an, a, an example of the DV of the DB winners, that is. DB winners, uh, this is the chance. 
go to America. This is the case number 1,100. Actually, this, this year, we have so many people from East Africa with very, very low case numbers. Guys, you can't believe it. Very low case numbers. And they have a... They are having a... a they are the ones with so many problems about funding. You know, because they are like, oh my goodness, my case number is so low. I have, uh, I have submitted the DS260 on time. So that means chances of getting to a nail early are very high. Actually, most of them, they are getting their two nails immediately because we have a 100 case number, 190 something, 290 something, have 300. Uh, I was counting in the DV 2023 was up group and more than 10 people have case numbers low uh, below 1,000. Below 1,000, imagine. Mm. So, they are worried. They, they are like, we don't have enough time to look for money. <laughs> to look for money. They are like, oh my goodness, where am I going to get this amount of money? Because I tell them, uh, they obviously know that the two NLs, the visa bulletin, will be released on August. This August. For those who will interview in October, this year. That's this year, guys. So they are like, guy, 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 guy. Why am I going to get all this money? Medical money, a lot of money, visa fee, a lot of money. And I'm like, relax. God will provide. Right now we are in May. So we have the whole of May, the whole of June, the whole of July, the whole of August, and September. Maybe September that is when you are going to go for them, for the medicals. So this month, God will do miracles. And they are like, Chico. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? And the way economy is bad. Economy is moving from bad to us, from worse to us. We don't have jobs. We are we are depending or we are surviving on the baruas. Hmm? Let me tell you guys. God, our God is a God of order. He works. I want to to cut here. He works. Uh, in a way that we can't tell, in a way that we can't tell. Let me give you an example with our case. Our case. That is back in 2017. Yes, 2017. That's when we, that's when we, we the results came out because our time we are DV 2018. So the results came out in 2017. By that time, by that time, uh, we <clears throat> we were not doing that bad, but imagine we didn't know that GV it is a lot of money. We didn't have that money. Can you guys get? We didn't have that money. We were a family of five, a family of five, but uh, we didn't know that it, it is that process, a very exhausting process, a very long process that it needs a lot of money. We didn't know that. We didn't know that. But God made a way. And this is how he did it. This is how he did it. So I had like a small business in my village shop. I was selling electricals. Not electronics, electricals. This thing that do electricity connection, wiring and everything. Those things. And I had an Mpesa uh, agency. I was an Mpesa agent. But let me tell you, once we received the news that we have been selected, God opened the doors. The customers were flowing. Hmm? The customers were flowing. I don't know why I forget. I forgot to do a video and I showed you where I used to have a shop. Although nowadays it is not the same, but you could have seen where. It was somewhere that you cannot think customers would uh, will be flow, flowing imagine i was selling i was making a lot of sales god god opened ways because he knew we, need, we needed a lot of money imagine i was making a lot of sales per day 
a lot of sales. I was going home when I was very tired. Customers were coming in the morning. You know, I am a mom. I have to prepare sure when ready to go to school. Ian was young. I used to go with Ian to the shop. So customers were coming very early in the morning. They call, hello, where are you? We want to buy this and this and this. And I'm like, oh, give me like 30 minutes. I come here. No, can I come get you? Because most of the customers, they had the uh, Okada, Budabo, Garaki. Mm -hmm. They would come and take me to the shop. Most of the time, I, I, I was not allowed to, to even take a shower. They are like, there, I'm coming to get you. Before I got to take a shower, they are there. Because it was like it was like ten minutes from my shop to where I was to my home. So God opened the door. Customers, God gave me favor. Mm? The whole place, everybody knew that this shop, they, it is the best. It is the best. God gave me that favor. I was selling like something else. And you know what? Most of the customers are men because you can't imagine women coming by for the, electric, for the electricals. So 90% of my customers were men. They were flowing there like something else. Mm? And you know men are so good. If there is a, if there is a full fee, who needs some wire, 1.5, 2.5, the pipe conduits and everything, they were coming to get me. Mm? They come get me with my baby <laughs> and then I go and make the sales. So there is no way I am going to sell for him and then I close, I then go back home to, to prepare myself. So I will stay there. Mm -hmm. So, and most of them they were coming around seven or some minutes to eight before eight because I used to leave home uh, by eight. I walk 30 minutes walking, but it was like less than 10 minutes with Okada. That is, uh, that is the. Buddha Buddha or motorbike. So God provided open way. And then we we we, we had a company. We had a company. So this is how we were this is how we were working. So we had a company. We were getting tenders to install CCTV cameras and electricity. But CCTV cameras and security systems, we were doing it for the high schools or secondary schools. And the electricity and security system, we were doing it um, for premises in other buildings, okay? And also churches and, and schools. So we were getting these standards. But things were not this good before we were selected. Once you were selected, the tenders, you are getting tenders, 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 tenders. And then everything, they had to come to buy it from the shop. So you guys, you can see how busy this the shop was. It was a mini shop, but we were making a good money since we got selected. Since we got selected, so God opened the door. Now, the money that we were we made from the sales was not enough for the whole process. For the whole process, because you guys, you know, medicals. You have to go for the medicals, all of you, and everybody has to pay like 30,000. So for the medicals, we paid like 155,000 Kenyan shillings. 155K Kenyan shillings. That was medicals. And then we had some miscellaneous because some people had to, to be repeated the x-ray. Yes, x-ray, chest x-ray. Those are some, some unplanned expenses that happened. So... And we, we, we had kids, we didn't have a car, we had to plan for the transportation to the embassy the day of the interview because these are kids, it was raining, it has to be a very early in the morning. So much money that was needed and then we, had, we needed some uh, money for the air ticket and then green card money. And we had to pay the green card money. We wanted to pay when we were back home. So, the money that we raised... The money that we had catered for medicals and visa fees and visa fees and then uh, and then when we went for the interview when we went for the interview and we, we, we our visas were approved now we had now we had the audacity <laughs> now we had the audacity to start selling stuff at the home the home appliances and everything so it, I remember it was on a Thursday when we went for the 
for the interview at the embassy and we paid 174,000 Kenyan shillings. 174,000 Kenyan shillings. And two weeks before, we were at the medicals and we paid 155,000 Kenyan shillings. So if you had those amount of money, that is uh, approximately 350,000 Kenyan shillings or more, or more. So, even if I'm telling you, you are not that bad, actually this money had started, eh? we, we, we had already, we were still um, spending a lot of money. So, when we went for the interview and we got our visas approved, it was on a Thursday. I remember, uh, we used, I used to go to a fellowship and the fellowship was on Thursday. So, because we went to the embassy very early in the morning and we had kids, so we were expedited. We have got expedited with children, so we didn't take long. By 10 a.m., we were on our way home, already with us approved. So I was like, oh my goodness, now it is the high time to start selling this stuff. Because our visas are approved, we have left our passports at the embassy. So we are excited, calling, calling our host, telling them we are approved. And then I had to go to the fellowship to thank God for the favor of the visa. So uh, I remember we took some photos there at the because when we were going home, we didn't have a car, so we had to walk to a stage there. I think at the village market or where where we 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 bought the matatus to Remuru and then from from Remuru to home hmm? to my village. <laughs> By that time, I was like, I want to, do these people know who they are carrying? Do they know we are Americans yeah, in the making? But I was so happy. I went to the fellowship. I didn't tell anybody anything. Actually, when I went to the fellowship, uh, they were already started, but I had to go in. So I went in and they were like, hey, Shiko. They don't call me Shiko, actually, by, by, um, back home or the church. Or at the time they don't call me Shiko, but they said, Hey, I'm a flying, can you come and lead us with a with a praise song? And I was like, Oh my goodness, I'm so blank. What I have inside me is just I'm I'm so full of thanksgiving. But I was like, I'm not in a position to, but I was so overwhelmed by the God's greatness because our visas are approved. And they were like, hey. She usually she usually reads praises. What's happening? She came late. She does not want to read praises. What is happening? But she's so smart. I didn't talk to anybody, but I was so happy. I went to that fellowship and I thank God. And after the fellowship now, because uh it was still near where my shop was, I was like, I went to, to two ladies and I was like, hey guys. I'm selling my fridge. <laughs> Those were the first thing to announce. I'm sell selling my fridge and I'm selling a washer, washing machine. I had a washer, a washing machine. So those two ladies, now they start spreading, 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 spreading news that she is going to America and she is selling fridge. Not, not, not exactly fridge. You know, they were like, she's selling everything. So those two ladies, actually, I didn't tell anybody else. Those two ladies spread the news. And before I went home that 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 evening, I had like five customers. Five customers. They were like, tomorrow before you come to work, because tomorrow was to be Friday, I'm coming to your house to see what I will buy. To see if there is anything I can buy. Guys, allow me because I use my hand. <laughs> my house clean and everything so they came and they were like guy you guys you are leaving so you are selling everything ah. now the, 
one lady say i want gas cooker i want the burner i want the cupboard guys you know the what you need there <laughs> and what you need cupboard you are like ah, if you you are selling beds i would like to buy beds for my kids and I'm like, yeah i'm selling everything i'm selling even the sofa sets hmm? i'm selling the couches this is the couches i'm selling sofa sets hmm? right the triplex i think <laughs> those, those ones were, were sofa sets hmm? guy they start spreading they start spreading so i was like from that day i was like if you want to buy anything bring money bring the money I write somewhere. If you have bought the bed, bring money. But you are not carrying because why are you going to sleep? You are going to get the bed once the day that you'll be leaving. Okay? So they were coming, they were coming. So, and I was like, I'm taking cash. If you are coming with bare mouth, I want this sofa set and you don't pay anything, that one is not counted. Somebody who has money will come and I will take that money and you'll be left there. And you know what? I am not bragging. I don't want credit or something. Or oh, I need money. I was like, you know, guys, I'm, I need money. That's why I'm selling all this because I need money. So don't come here with my, your mouth empty. Eh? Empty mouth that keep me this one. I will get it at the end of the month. I need money now. <laughs> and you know that? You, because these people, they know. You are not selling this stuff because they are bad. You are selling because you are relocating, right? So they were coming. And actually, I was selling like the actual price I bought. Guys, yes. Because this stuff, I, I bought them like three or four, five years ago. So the price that they can buy at the shop, it was so high. Eh? So the same, same price I bought, the same, same price I was selling. And they bought it. They bought everything. Hmm? They bought everything. So if you want to buy a bed, you buy everything. Okay, you want a bed? Baby's bed. Okay, this is the bed. This is the bed. Which one do you want? So it is the bed, the mattress, and the beddings. It is not buying at any. Let me get the mattress. Uh -uh. If you want to buy, buy everything. You buy the beddings, the mattress, the whatever. If you want to buy, uh, but some of things I could not sell. Maybe you want to buy sufurias, the cooking pots. Then buy sufurias and then I give you spoons for free. Uh, buy, I sold even the washing basins, the karais, hmm? the karais, the bucket, and I sold everything. Everything. And I made a lot of money because I was like, in two weeks, I'm not supposed to be selling. I'm supposed to. I, I gave myself two weeks to sell. Two weeks. Because after, after three days, we received an email that our visas are ready to be collected. So when we went to the, to the DHL office in, uh, in town, CBD, we left that DHL office. We went straight to IOM Lavington. That's where we went to pay our air ticket. So when we went home, we went home with the visas and the air tickets. So we already knew which date we are, we are flying. So this money that we, we, we wanted, they were the money just for shopping. Mm? Because we had to shop, guys. <laughs> we had to shop and also to get some money. To get some pocket money. That is. So... Okay, so my skumawiki, my skumawiki is there, are uh, there, so I have to put it like this, I have to put it like this, I'm not cutting cabbage right now, but because I can't finish this story, so this is it. So uh, we sold everything and we got quite a, some good amount of money and we did some shopping because we had to shop for suitcases, some clothes. They told us uh, uh, for the kids, don't shop in Kenya, just come with the money. Uh, we are going to shop here. Kids clothes are so cute here in America, but for you adults, 
shop in Kenya, everything from Kenya, because here, if you want if you want something quality, it is so expensive, but for the kids, just come shop here. So we just shopped some stuff, and then we were left like with like 70,000 Kenyan shillings. And we were like, ah, this money is so little. Considering we don't know where we are going, and considering we have three kids, 20,000 Kenyan shillings is not that, according to us, that is. So, and we were doing this thing uh, so fast, so fast, so fast. So, uh, we, didn't, we didn't make uh, a fundraiser, we didn't plan a fundraiser at all, at all. Because we were like, ah, this is the village. We start involving people, involving people with their stuff. And you know, these people already knew that our family are going to America. And then it reached a time, because when the, when the results came out, everybody knew, everybody knew that we are going to America. So they were like, we are going next week or next month. But you know, it is a process. It took some time. And when we were like still continuing with our job as usual, they were like, ah, these people, they are not going. Even Trump stopped the, stopped, stopped the, the process, so they are not going anywhere. So they were like, relax, and they, some are, were very happy because they are not going anywhere. So, and you know, it is in the village they were talking. So there is no way we could involve them with our staff going to America. So we, we were so, we were doing these things, Chiniamaji. Even selling, it was, it was just, it has to be known that we are selling now because the visas are already out. But before visas were already out, they we were just doing things in Yamaji and because they were already given up, they had already given up with us and <laughs> we were like, we are, we, are, we are even acting and pretending like we are not going anywhere. So we didn't want to involve them with our staff going to America. Do we come give us some money? You want to go to America? We did not want anything to do with that. But now, guys, you know, you see, seven hundred dollars, and we have to pay. Actually, this seven hundred dollars that that we had, or seventy thousand Kenyan shillings that we had, we we have not paid the the green card money. Two hundred and twenty. US dollars each person. So actually it was not enough because it was 220 times five. So that was that was eleven hundred dollars. That is one hundred and ten Kenyan shillings and ten thousand Kenyan shillings. Actually, this one hundred was not enough. And we just remembered, oh, we were told to pay this before we leave. Oh my goodness. So this is 70, uh, this money is not enough. So what are we going to do? Obviously, we have paid the year ticket. So yes, we are going. We have done some shopping and green card has to be paid. So our host was telling us, uh, don't worry about the green card. You guys, guys come over. Once you start working, you will get money and you are going to pay for the, for the green card. And we were like, ah, we don't want to, we don't want to go to, to America without having paid the green card money when we are back, came, back in Kenya. So, uh, and now we have sold everything, everything is paid for, and we don't have that enough money. And then we wanted some pocket money, of course, because we can't go to a foreign country without any pocket money. And we reached somewhere. So... We reached somewhere between a rock and a hard place. Yes, we are going, but nothing, 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 nothing. Um, two relatives. Two relatives. And let me tell you guys, when you are going to America, or when you are, God has blessed you and you are, you are having a change in your life, not everybody is happy for you. Even these people who are coming, they are just saying, oh gosh, now when you go there, don't forget about us, invite us. Now you are like, gosh, where are we going to invite you and you have not even reached there? And we need money. Why can't you guys? <laughs> Why can't you tell yourself to, to give us something? We need money, guys. But you know, we don't want to fundraise. We don't want to do a fundraiser. So, uh, two relatives, actually, they came and they were like, uh, because you didn't plan for a, a fundraiser, where did you guys get this money? Do you need any money? Are you in need of any money? And you are like, yeah, we need. 
<laughs> you need money, but you, you, you can't go broadcasting to everybody that you need money. Uh, so they were like, uh huh, because I know you guys are good, you can't run away with my money. I have 300,000 Kenyan shillings. Let us plan when you are going to, to the bank and I give it to you. When you go back to, when you go to the US, just take your time. Once you settle, now you can start paying me little by little. I don't need it all at once. You can just start paying me uh, little by little. So that that person gave us 300,000 Kenyan shillings. And then another one, still a relative, came and, and, and he asked us, guys, uh, and he was just joking and he said, ah, I have a 100K, 100K which I'm not using. Do you guys need it? <laughs> just jokingly. And we were, hey, bring it, bring it, we need it. So those two guys, uh, they lend us one guy 300,000 and the other one lend us 100,000. So the 700,000 that we had, not 700, 70, 70, Thousand that we initially had. Now we, we went shopping and buying bank stuff because now we have money. We have money, although it is debt. Now we were good, and then we paid for the green card when we were still back in Kenya. And when we came here, and then we changed these Kenyan shillings to dollars, and we came here with four thousand dollars. When we arrived in America, we had four thousand dollars. You see, God, four thousand dollars, but. They were like a loan. You are, it, it was like a loan uh, from these two friends or, or two relatives of ours. But this $4,000 played a very big role in our start of life here in America because um, it helped us to move from our host as fast as we could because we could afford to pay the deposit for the rent in one month, uh, one month rent. And then buy some stuff, food and some essential and started life so that's how we how that's how we managed to raise money so we could not do a fundraiser because of so many it is not that we could not like to but we could not we did not want to involve so many people because guys <laughs> i don't know how to put this but you get me and get me well. Once you do a fundraiser, everybody in the whole village will be, you will you will be owing them modo talkire no now kire. Anybody who came to your fundraiser and anybody who did not come, you will be owing them. Whenever you go back home or even when you are here, anybody has a has a has a something, hey you remember I, I came for your fundraiser and now you don't have to you don't have to to, to run away. You have to come at my at my event or whatever you owe everybody whoever came for your fundraiser and whoever did not come guys you owe everybody in your village if there is anything happening in your village you are there because everybody know they they fundraised for you so it is good I, i'm not saying it is bad but once you do a fundraiser just know you owe everybody in your village you owe them and there is no way they you will blue tick them Anything happening in your village, you have to be there, guest of honor, everything. But if you, it is better to go to the bank and, and get a loan. Go to a circle and get a loan because you are going to pay. But fundraising, you will be carrying the whole village with your, with your back like this forever. It is not for one year, forever. Anybody who came for your fundraiser has to Anybody, even, even the one who did not come for your fundraiser, will behave like he did. And you are not going to, to not to help or not to chunk here or not to contribute to the event, whichever event they have or whichever ceremony. I'm not saying fundraising are bad, but because you are going to America, and these people, they know you're going to America, you're going to make money. <laughs> Everything you do, you owe them. You owe them big time, and this is forever. So it is better... Go to, a, go to a circle, get a loan, you be paying. Go to a bank, you get a loan, be paying. Or get a, get a, a, get a loan from any, somebody, like what we did. Like what we did. So, this person who lent this, who, these people who, who lend us 
this money. We paid them and now we don't owe them, right? We don't owe them. We paid them back and we don't owe them any anything. But fundraising, you'll be owing them forever and ever. Amen. But if it comes to a point that you can't be able to you can't be able to raise money, now you don't have otherwise to do a fundraiser, but it, let it be the last option. Let it be the last option. Uh, some people are like, Shiko, we don't do fundraiser for the villagers, but for the relatives, the extended family. You can, there is a friend of mine who did that, but even the extended families, the relatives, they didn't help. They didn't. They were like, ah, you're going to America. Ah, and they, they were like, you know, not everybody is happy for you are. For your blessings so they were the relatives were like not happy they didn't assist and they wanted them not to go that was there that was the agenda but that i know there are those families who are good who are supportive and may god bless them but the whole village coming fundraising for you to go to america my friend they will do but Forever and ever, you carry the whole village on your back like this. Yes. And every, every time you'll be reminded, we helped you to go to America. <laughs> we helped you to go to America and now you can't speak calls. We helped you to go to America and then, and now you can't reply our messages. When you go to visit, everybody needs something from you because they came for you to go to America. So it is good uh to try other ways to get money eh? let fundraising be the last i know in the comment section you're going to say she call that is being <laughs> that is being proud let me tell you carrying the whole village i you guys i'm talking from somebody's who some people who did that so they were like she call can you tell your people not to do fundraising they are here in america already and they did fundraising so Every time they carry the village, they, like this, on their back, because everybody in the village came for them to go to America. They told me to share this with you. Don't do fundraising. If you have to do them, let them be the last, 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 last option. Yes, the last, 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 last option. Okay, try how to get the, the ways I have told you, and God will make a way, of course. And God will, God will always provide a destiny connector and somebody who will be a solution solver, be a problem solver to your, to your problems. Believe in God. If it is his will, it is his bill. He will provide. But don't do fundraising, guys. Don't do fundraising. Let it be the last option. God bless you. Thank you so much. Now I, I can now go ahead and get my messages. And then I... I fry this kumawiki and I do cabbages and then I take a break. May God bless you. I can't work. I can't work when I'm talking <laughs> because uh, I normally use my hands to do this and this and this and this. I'm a teacher. You guys you know that. But I hope this video helped you in one way or the other. And let's meet our next videos. God bless you. Always keep hope alive. America, you are coming. If God made you be selected, he will definitely provide you for the needed funds. And even if you are single, married, with kids, all the funds will be provided by God. He opens ways for us because he loves us and he holds our future. Yes, he is God and he works in mysterious ways. Thank you so much, Shiko Hope TV. My name is Shiko Hope and this is your home of hope. Keep hope alive in every second, guys. It is possible. Bye.